I did a problem with a ladder and I wanted to find the, the minimum angle that you could put this before it falls over and I did that. And then I said something about what if a person's moving up the ladder. So I have a slightly different problem. Uh, I wanted to change the numbers to make sure that it would work. And I, I want to see if a person's going up this ladder, how far can they go? And I actually don't even know that it's going to work because it might not work at all. They might be able to get to the top and not fall over at all. Uh, how far can they go before the ladder slips? And, and so it's a little bit different problem here because we have this extra downwards force from the, the interaction between the ladder and the human. Uh, and, and then that's that. And I'm going to put no friction on the wall over here because that makes it a lot more difficult. But other than that, I gave length of the ladder, the mass of the ladder, the mass of the human, the angle, and the coefficient of friction. So let's go ahead and draw a force diagram for the ladder. I'll draw it right here. So here's my ladder. Ooh, I, it's at a slightly different angle, but I think we're okay. And then I have the gravitational force acting at the center of the ladder. I'll call that, I called it ML. MLG, that's the gravitational force on the ladder. I have the contact force between the bottom of the ladder and the floor, I'll call that N1. I have the contact force between the wall over here, I'll call that N2. Uh, I have a frictional force right here, I'll call that F friction. And then I have the person. And so the person pushes down and so there's a normal force, and that normal force would be this way, right? And so the person pushes on the ladder this way. But there's also got to be a frictional force or the person will slide down the ladder. So in the net force on the person has to be pushed up from the ladder. So the, ladder, the person pushes down. So the person is going to push down with the same gravitational force as the person. And this will be mh human g. And those are my forces. Now, again, if this is in equilibrium, then the following must be true. The net force in the x direction, and so this is, this is L, this distance from here, here is L, this is L over 2, and this is S. I don't know the distance, I'm going to find S. But I want to find it when it's in equilibrium. So the net force in the x direction uh, is going to be equal to N2 minus the frictional force, and that's going to be equal to 0. And those are the only two forces in the x direction. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say, if, if we want to find how far up this, this ladder this person goes, we're going to look for the maximum frictional force. Because remember that, in general, the magnitude of the frictional force, static frictional force, is less than or equal to some coefficient times the normal force. But since we want to find how far he's going to go, we're going to see, we're going to max out this friction force. So we're going to use F friction is equal to the coefficient of friction I guess I should put S, S times the normal force. So that goes right there. So I can actually just go ahead and write N2 minus mu S N1 equals zero, All right? That's N1. Now let's do the net force in the Y direction, F net Y. So here I have N1 is pushing up. I have the mat, the weight of the human and the weight of the person, I mean, the, the ladder pulling down. I'm going to combine those two together just because I want to. So it's going to be minus mass of the human plus mass of the ladder times g. And those are the only two forces. Those are only three forces in the y direction. Now, you'll notice I want to solve for s, and s doesn't appear in any of these equations, so that's a problem. Uh, so now we need to look at rotational equilibrium. Uh, and, and to do that, I need to pick a point. So torque, if you remember, I'll put it up here. Torque about some point O is R, F, sine theta. And I'm using the scalar version of torque theory as a vector version of torque. I just want you to know that I know, that you know, that we all know. But uh, you have to pick a point about which to calculate the torque. And it doesn't matter in this case which point I pick because it's not rotating about any point. It's, I can pick any point I want. Uh, and so we're going to pick a point that makes it easy for us. Now there's an, actually another version of this that I like to use, r perpendicular f. So if you take r sine theta, that's the, the perpendicular distance from the point, yeah, I'm going to pick that point, to the force. So we can make it a little bit simpler. So let's pick this as the point of torque. And if I do that, you'll notice that by picking that point, I eliminate two forces in my, my torque equation. 
the normal force one doesn't exert a torque and the and the friction doesn't exert a torque because they have zero R values. So that's nice. So let's write this torque net zero. So what do I have? Well, these exert no torque. Now what about the gravitational force due to the ladder? This is gonna wanna make the ladder rotate this way. So that's counterclockwise. So that's gonna be a positive torque. And then I can find this distance right here. This is L over two. I should draw it right here. This is L over two. That's a two. This is theta. So this is L over two sine theta. So the torque is going to be equal to M ladder G L over two sine theta. Now what about the torque due to the person? Well, it's the same thing, except now I have a distance S and I have the force MG. And it's also gonna be positive. So I'm gonna say plus M H G S sine theta. And then I have the torque due to this. It's going to be in the negative direction because it makes a clockwise rotation, right? If that was the only thing, it'd make it rotate this way. Now, in this case, I'm going... Oh, these are cosine. Cos what am I thinking? Cosine. Cosine. My mistake. This one's going to be sine. You can make mistakes. Cross it out. You don't have to restart the video. I'm just letting you know, I'm not gonna restart the video. Or maybe I did restart the video and this is the fifth mistake I made and I finally said, I'm not gonna redo the video anymore. But no, it's the first it's the first mistake I made. But it could have been the fifth, nobody knows. Okay, so uh, here the torque arm for this one is this distance, right? Because that's, that's this distance right here, which is perpendicular to that force. So that's going to be minus N2 times sine of theta and that has to be equal to zero. And I want to solve for G, I mean S. So let's just rewrite these three equations uh, that, that we're dealing with. This one, N2 minus mu S N1 equals zero. That's that one right there. And then I have this one, uh, this one, N1 minus MH plus ML G equals zero. And then I have that one right there, which is a little bit longer. Uh, and I'll put it right here. MLG L over two cosine theta plus MHGS cosine theta minus N2 sine theta equals zero. Now remember, theta is just a number, so it's not a, it's not a big deal. And here I have, the, I'm looking at what I don't know. I don't know N2. So I need to solve this for N2, and I can do that. N2 equals mu S N1, big whoop, right? But I can solve this for N1. N1 equals MH plus ML G. That's true. And then I can substitute, oh, that's N1. I can substitute it in there, and I get N2 equals mu S MH plus ML G. Now I can substitute that in up here. So let's just go ahead and uh, add this to both sides, subtract that from both sides, and I get MH G S cosine theta equals N2 sine theta minus ML G L over 2 cosine theta. Now I'm going to put this in for N2 up here, and I get MH g s cosine theta equals mu i'm putting in for n2 right here mu s m h plus m l g sine theta minus m l g l over 2 cosine theta now right away i can do some cancellations here uh g Right, G is in every term, I can divide everything by G. Boom, boom. So this problem will work on the Earth or Mars or whichever planet you choose to pick. Next, I'm going to divide by MH cosine theta and then I'll really be done. So I get S equals mu S MH plus ML, that's a, a subscript, sine theta over cosine theta minus 
ML over MH, L over 2, cosine theta over sine theta. And I'm going to write this as tangent. I'm going to write that as 1 over tangent. Yes, you could write that as something. I don't really care. So I'm, I get S equals mu S MH plus ML tangent theta minus ML over 2 MH L 1 over tangent theta. Okay, let's check the units, right? Because I, I could have made a mistake. So this should have units of distance. Right here, I have, ooh. I didn't divide that by mh. And then, I'm missing a distance unit here. Hmm. Okay, so let's just go up here. So this is from the torque equation. Force, distance, force, distance, force. That should be L. So then this should be L. So then this should be L. So then this should be L. L. Okay, see, this is why you check units. Because I had here mu, which has no units, mass, which has kilograms, Kilograms, so that's fine. But then I had tangent theta would have no units. There's no way this had units of distance. So what I did was I went back and looked up here and tried to find the units for all my equations. And this torque equation should have force times distance, which that one did, that one did, that one didn't. And that's where I found my error. Did I have the error over here? I did. So this should be L. Okay. And, and so if you scroll back, when you're, I'm fixing this error, and you saw that, and you said, I'm leaving this video, this guy's crazy, then that's fine. You don't need this video if you saw that error, right? Except for the, the good jokes. There are good jokes. And you miss all, if you left, you miss all the good jokes. Okay, but I'm pretty sure that has at least have the right units. This has uh, mass over mass, so that's kilograms. Distance, tangent has no units. So we're good. Unit, distance, distance, distance. So at least that's good. Let's go ahead and put in our values and see what we get. So I get mu, I said was 0 0.6. Um, this is the sum of the masses, so it's going to be 80. L was 4. And then tangent of 60. And then I need to divide by 75, the mass of the human, minus the mass of the ladder 5 over the twice the mass of the human times the length 4 times 1 over tangent of 60. And I don't, this is a, a, a fairly complicated calculation to put in my calculator for me. I'm not really great at that, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, let's see. Clear. So I get 0. 0.6 times 80 times 4 times tangent of 60 divided by 75, that's that first term, minus 5 times 4, I could just put that as 20, I'm not that, okay, divided by parentheses 2 times 75 times tangent 60. Oh, it worked. 2.42 meters. And what I mean worked, right? Because if I go back over here, I'm saying he can go up, or she, can, the person can go up 2.4 meters, and at that point, the ladder will slip over. It's possible I could have got something like 8 meters for the solution, which just says that it's never going to fall over, right? You'd have to go way up here uh, in order to get the whole thing to go down, which you can't do. So I think that's a good solution. Um, if you want, you can play around with it. If I, if I decrease the frictional force right here, then this term has the coefficient of friction in it, but this term doesn't. So the whole thing is going to get smaller. Now, is it possible that you could have a negative distance? Yes. And what would happen if you get a negative distance? It means that even without the person on the ladder, uh, the friction would not be enough to keep it up at this angle. That's why I picked a 60-degree angle and a higher uh, 
higher frictional coefficient. And so one way to do that would be to go down here, and that would kind of add an extra torque to prevent it from falling over, even though there's no ladder down there. So if you're making this as a test problem, uh, you know, definitely work out the numbers beforehand because you could get both those cases. Case one where the person's way up here, and that's kind of, you could just say it doesn't tip over, but it's not, that's not what you're trying to test for. But if you get a negative S, which is definitely possible with this equation, then that would just be, a student would, you know, you could say, yeah, a student should figure that out. But I'm saying they'd get a negative number and think they did wrong, and that's not what I'm really testing for. Maybe that's what you're testing for. I don't know. Okay. Sorry for the two mistakes, but if you made it all the way to the end, you got the good jokes uh, and you got to see the solution. And I apologize for the error. I won't make any more errors this year. I promise. That's not a promise I can keep. Later. <laughs>